Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. And with the price of copper being sky high right now, we're getting a lot more interest in our scrap metal and recycling equipment. And so on today's video, I'm going to take a couple samples of copper chops and just the tailings from those, the, the plastic and the waste that they can't get any more copper out of. And we're going to run on the shaker table here behind me and see if we can recover any more metal out of the waste that they're just throwing away in the dump. Here's a look at our two samples. And this one has gone through screens and static precipitation and they've gotten, they've used all their tricks to get as much metal out of it as they can. But there's still some little copper hair wire and stuff in there. This is the other sample and this is, hasn't been screened or precipitated or gone through the static separator or anything. And so there should be um, more metal in this one. But we'll run them separate and see what we can get out of these two guys. Here's our shaker table we're going to be running them on. And I'm just going to feed them up here in this distributor trough. And I'm going to get them wet first. And on a couple of my previous videos, I've run um, a sheet of very light plastic over the whole table to break the surface tension. And this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put them in a bucket, I'm going to get them wet, and I'm going to mix just a little bit of soap in with them to break that surface tension and try and get all that stuff to sink down into the grooves here and the metal, the copper, and probably aluminum is going to work their way up. The copper should come up under this water bar here and down into the number one and number two. The aluminum probably won't be able to make much up the ramp here, and so it'll come down into the number three middlings, and then most of the plastic and everything is going to come down into the number four. All right, guys, i got a bucket of water here. There's about a gallon and a half or two gallons in here. And uh, this is just a, a paint stirrer, so I'm going to mix it up with this. We'll take our first sample here. This is the coarser stuff. And I'll dump, I don't know, half. I'll start with half. It's easier to mix if you go slow when you're mixing it with the water. And then this is just some dish soap from my house. And we'll get some in there. You don't want too much. You don't want a bubble bath. And then I'm just going to... Mix it up. So I don't know if we'll be able to see anything, but if I clear the suds away, there's nothing. I mean, there's a little bit of plastic that floats, but there's nothing floating on top. The soap has broken all the surface tension, and uh, any little residual oil on there is now gone. And so all that should run real nice on the shaker table. So I'll get the rest of this mixed up into this bucket, and then we'll start running. All right, so I'm just going to take our, our slurry here, and I'm going to put it in this distributor trough right here. I don't even see it. Uh, but then I'll get it going, and then we'll take a look at what's going on in the table. So I can get this on video. I poured, I don't know, maybe a quarter of it onto the table. And you can see the massive amount of copper coming over. We're still getting a little bit of copper floating here. You can see it floating down the table. So let me see if I can find a little piece of plastic to drape over the table. But the copper is going to work its way down. The copper is going to work its way down the table on these grooves. And you can see some of it already coming out here into the number one and number two. So let me see if I can find something to break the rest of that surface tension. All right, guys, now I realize this is the absolute dumbest looking thing in the world, but it works really well. So what I've taken, I've taken just a garbage bag and I slid it in half. So the, the plastic breaks the surface tension of the water. So anything that goes underneath has to sink. And once it sinks, then it's down in the groove and it works its way across. And then this uh, sheet of plastic is clear so we can see what's going on over here on the cleaning plane. But this is super, super light painter's tarp. Um, it's, it's like three mil or two mil. It's just super, super light. And all you're doing is breaking the surface tension so the little bit of copper uh, and oil or whatever's making it float sinks and breaks down below the, the surface of the water and then it just works its way across down to the number one and number two. Thank you. 
you can see that copper is all coming underneath the sheet. It's working its way across the table. All the plastic is bouncing out from underneath the sheet and some of it's floating. Some of this plastic is, is less dense than water so it floats. A lot of it's sinking. But there's no more floating copper. It's all just plastic coming out here. And you can see up here you got quite a stream of copper coming out. All right, so I got it tuned where you pretty much have clean copper coming into the number one and number two. There's a little bit of copper coming down here into the number three, and this can just be collected and rerun. And then over here, is, it's all just floating plastic down to the number four. So like I say, these things look really goofy, but they work really well for breaking that surface tension and then the copper can come clean over here in the number one and number two, and everything else can go off into its separate bins as waste. All right guys, here's our number one and number two. This is from the pre-screened fraction, so this is right out of the granulator. And you know, you can see if I can get it to focus here. It's pretty much pure copper. There's some tinned wire in there. That's the lighter gray stuff. And then obviously the copper hair wire. So that's the number one. The number two actually had quite a bit more in it than the number one. And there's a little bit of contamination in here. You can see there's a little bit of aluminum flakes and a little bit of red insulation. And a lot of that came over when I brushed down the table. I brushed down the table at the end. But when you get open, when you get it kind of opened up, there's there's still a little bit of contamination, but it's mostly metal. Some of the aluminum went in there. And it's really hard. You know, this sample weighed 24 pounds, I think. And so it's really hard to try and get the table tuned up just right when you're only running 20, 24 pounds, if you had a couple tons of the stuff and all day to play with it, you could probably make a really, really nice cut. Um, I also expect that some of this insulation here like this one, I can't grab it, but um, there's still copper in there. There's still copper in the insulation. That's why it came across. So there's the first sample. I'll get the second sample run here. Actually, let's take a look at the number three as well. So here's the number three, and this is mostly insulation. There's still some copper in there. You can see it. Um, and again, this is, I think, a, a table tuning issue where you had some copper going down in the number three, and I think you could take care of a lot of that by uh, getting the, the plastic spread out just right and cut to the right shape. Uh, and also, you know, there's, there's hardly any here. You could take this and rerun it with your second batch and get it cleaned up or, you know, your second run. So you can really use the middlings as a, kind of a, a catch-all and then just rerun the 5% that comes in here at the end of the day, the next day or whatever. So, again, this isn't lost copper. It's just you got to reprocess it or get the table tuned up a little bit better. All right, one last thing here. I just weighed these two and took off the weight of the bucket and a little bit for the water. But there's a little over a pound of metal here. And in 25 pounds, um, what's that, about 4% of the total weight? So if you had, oh boy, if you had a ton of this stuff, you'd have, what, 80 pounds of metal left over? I think I did that math right. And so 80 pounds of copper at 350, four bucks a pound is, uh, what, $280, $320, something like that, a ton. So that that probably is worth going after at the current prices and you can run it really pretty fast on the table so um, this is stuff right out of the granulator you can get rid of your static separator you can get rid of your screens uh, get it wet and put a little soap in with a mixer and then run it right on uh, a shaker table just like this one and get another 
several hundred dollars out of your tailings. This is the screen sample. And this one's actually running quite a bit better. I think the particles are a little bit smaller, and so they they can move with the water a little bit better. But you can see all the clean plastic coming down here. I may have it tuned better as well. I got a little bit of plastic hanging over here. But you can see the copper coming up underneath here into the number two. And clean copper coming down here into the number one. And, and you can see through this plastic here, the copper's just working its way right down underneath the plastic. Looks like there's quite a bit more aluminum flakes in this one. Or this may have been a little bit of carryover from the last sample. Because if this is screened, I don't know if those aluminum flakes are supposed to be in there or not, but there's all that copper coming down and we're catching it all right here in the number one and number two. Very, very little is going over the edge here in number three. Coming down here, you can see it piling up here in the corner. Nice clean little hair wires. All right, I just finished feeding all the screen sample. And yeah, it's just working so good. It's just really, the copper's coming clean down here under the tarp. I don't see any copper at all going down to the number four. I got it tuned to where there's hardly anything coming down into the number three. And so we're getting really, really good separation between the number four plastic waste junk and just really, really clean copper. And it looks like all your aluminum is coming down the second safety groove, almost all of it. So you could probably even split these two run all this into the number one is clean and get a contaminated aluminum copper cut here or actually there's there's hardly any copper in that second groove so there might be some more fine tuning to do here but i think we're just throwing some plastic on the table and running the sample it's working really really well let's see what happens look under there see then the copper starts to float a little bit so I'll get it. I'll get it wiped down here and cleaned off and we'll we'll take a look at what we got in the number one and number two and then the number three as well. And here's our screened, the sample that was screened number one and two. And again, when I brushed the table down, I got some aluminum contamination, but you can see there's the copper. When you when you see it run, it's just all copper. So if you can run it all day without brushing it down, you can get, I think, 100% clean number two. And then this one, like we talked about, maybe splitting the first safety groove and the second safety groove would clean up some of that stuff. But still, the, the majority of this, especially by weight, is copper. And again, a lot of that contamination came down from when I brushed it. So let's take a look at number three, and then I'll try and get these two weighed and see how much copper we recovered. Here's the number three, and like I was mentioning, I got a much better cut between the number three and number four. And I think what that did is it took a lot of the plastic out, so you have a significant amount more copper in this, but a lot less volume. I mean, there's not a cup and a half of stuff down there in the bottom compared to the first run we did. And so this would be real easy to take and, and rerun back on the table uh, with your virgin material and get a lot of this copper out of here But there's there's enough copper in this fraction you want to you want to go get it So I just got these weighed and they weigh a little less than a pound and the original sample weighed 24 pounds as well um, so you're in that three in the three to four percent range of copper probably. So it looks like by screening in the electrostatic precipitator, whatever they got, whatever their system is, uh, it's recovering some copper, but there's still a lot of copper, a lot of metal left 
in the ways that they're thrown out. And, uh, and so this is, again, you're looking at that $200, $300 a ton that they're essentially throwing in the garbage that they could be recovering with the shaker table. All right, guys, thanks for watching our video. And if you're interested in any more information on the 4x8 shaker table behind me, you can find more information at our website or you can find our email contact in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.